Good morning. My name is Simon Moss. I am the co-founder of Global Citizen, and I'm thrilled to be here today with a wonderful panel of experts and specialists as we discuss voting as a human right. Our work at Global Citizen is grounded in the idea of citizens taking action to change the world, and that starts in a country like America, with citizens using their voices to be heard to impact their leaders. We know that America's influence in the world, from tackling pandemics to addressing climate change, is huge. As you might tell from my accent, I grew up in Australia, a country where voting is compulsory and where elections always happen on weekends. So to be honest, growing up, America's election system struck me as a little strange and baffling at times. But I always knew and see today as we have millions of global citizens around America just how important the American system is to lead the world on challenges like climate change, a challenge that we saw burn 5 million acres of forests and land in my home country of Australia earlier this year, a challenge that we see burning millions of acres on the US West Coast right now. And we know that these fires are caused and made more frequent and intense by climate change, and the US is the world's second largest emitter of CO2. Based on recent surveys, we know that climate change is a huge issue in the minds of many people ahead of this election, vying alongside other issues of economic opportunity, pandemic response and racial justice. And we're here today to listen to some of the foremost experts in the country talking not just about the importance of this election, but the important role that the private sector have in shifting a culture around voter turnout knowing that this country saw only 60% uh, of people who were eligible vote in the last election. And so to help us drive that conversation, I'm pleased to welcome our speakers, Fran Katsudis, the EV and Chief People Officer at CISCO, Monica Ramirez, the founder and president of Justice for Migrant Women, David Clooney, the executive director of Black Economic Alliance, and Andy Bernstein, the co-founder and executive director of Headcount. Um, so, to get us started, Fran, I'd love to come to you first, because you help lead a global organisation that connects people around the world and empowers them to overcome crisis and builds up communities through technology. Can you tell me about uh, the approach that Cisco's taking and about the work that you're doing to provide and encourage your employees to fulfil their civic duty? Happy to, and thanks so much for having me. You know, first, what I'd like to say is as a company, we've been incredibly deliberate to just put our people first in everything that we do. Um, we believe in having a conscious culture, which means that we focus on our environment, our impact to the environment, characteristics, behaviors, and, and really looking at the overall experience. We try to drive transparency um, in, in a lot of what we do at Cisco. And what we've realized is that from a business perspective, it is so powerful to hear every voice within the company. And we know that that's the case as well from a government perspective and that every voice should be heard. So what we're doing from a Cisco perspective is we are giving our employees um, election day off. And, and we're doing this globally as well, Simon. So um, wherever our employees are in the world, we're gonna ensure that from a major election perspective, they have the day off. It's funny because, um, my father um, was telling me last week that in Greece, it's just natural. It, it's a day off. Um, and I think we just need to have a little bit of this mindset as employers that we prioritize this. We make it okay for our employees to prioritize this as well. And so we're committed to this idea. And I think we're going to learn a lot about how we can support our employees. Fantastic. Thanks, Fran. Monica? Your work with migrant women and farm workers uh, might have many of the same aspirations that Fran just mentioned, but they're operating often in a very different context to the staff at Cisco. Can you tell me about some of the challenges you're seeing in the work you're doing uh, to encourage and support voting this year and what you need companies to be doing differently? 
Thanks, Simon. Yes, um, the experience of farm workers is definitely different than the experiences of workers at Cisco. Um, farm workers in the United States work under very dangerous conditions. You talked about climate change, and right now farm workers are working uh, while the wildfires are raging. And um, you know, some of the challenges for farm workers when it comes to voting and just generally with their work and their lives is that farm workers, um, particularly those who migrate, um, you know, move from state to state, which means that they have difficulties establishing residency for purposes of voting. Um, the other is that because farm workers are so isolated and live in rural communities, they often don't have access to information about where to vote or how to vote or where to register. Um, you know, broadband access is a difficulty because in many rural areas, uh, folks don't have broadband, so they can't rely on the internet to look up the information that they need about voting. And the other major challenge would, uh, I would say is transportation because many farm workers rely on their employers for transportation um, to the job site and, and to their homes. And so for farm workers to be able to vote, that means that the employers would have to make an, uh, an effort to ensure that farm workers can get to the polls or to the Board of Elections in order to register. And so what we're doing is we're trying to provide more information to farm workers about their rights to vote. Um, for those who are undocumented, we want them to know that their family members who are documented should vote as well. And we certainly want employers to understand that they are a major part in uh, ensuring the health of our democracy, and that includes ensuring that farm workers can register to vote and can vote on election day. Thanks, Monica. And David, welcome uh, to, to the panel. And um, I understand that today is a hugely important day for some of the work you're doing in that it is National Black Voter Day. Could you tell us a little Indeed. bit about the day and why it matters? Thank you for having me. And uh, I am proud on behalf of the Black Economic Alliance, a coalition of black business leaders dedicated to improving economic outcomes for black Americans, uh, alongside BET, the National Urban League, and a number of other impact partners to declare today the first ever National Black Voter Day, Friday, September 18th. Uh, this initiative is meant to get black voters engaged early uh, to take five steps. One, register. Two, check your registration. Three, make a plan. And we say by mask or by mail, no, where, how, and when you're going to vote. Number four, get your people. Don't go it alone. Uh, get your friends and your family ready as well. And then number five, show up early. Start and finish the process of voting early this year. Uh, and I'll just say over 40 states will allow early voting in person, early voting by mail, and no excuse absentee voting. Just about every, uh, everything we've done in 2020 has been different, more challenging, and has required more planning and effort. This campaign is about starting early, making a plan, and leaving nothing to chance. Thanks, David and Andy. You've just heard from three leaders with very different constituencies, but who are each making huge steps towards encouraging their audiences to uh, and communities to be able to vote this year. At Headcount, I know you do a lot of work with young people on registering them to vote. Can you tell us a bit about how you're reaching young people in, as David called it, this different year? Yeah. Well, our mantra is reach young people where they already are. And for many years, the focus was on concerts and large mass gatherings. And obviously, that went away this year. But the other place that young people are is online. And so we work with an array of partners, including musicians and entertainers, to reach young people where they are. So this year, we started running sort of contests where people could enter by checking their voter registration status. And as David said, that's such a, an important thing that every American should do in the next couple of weeks. So we're driving tens or hundreds of thousands of young people to check their voter registration status. And then a very large percentage will go and register if they find that they're not registered. And we're doing that largely with Global Citizen and some of the incredible talent that has worked with GC over the years. And in the end, the idea is really simple. Um, just use the reach that either celebrities have or large corporations, brands, media companies have, and put very simple opportunities in front of young people where they can register, they can check their registration, they can get information on early voting and absentee voting. It's not, it just is, it, sometimes it's as really simple as putting things in front of people in the places they already are. Great. Th thanks, Andy. And I want to, um, uh, dive in a little bit now to the challenges that we know we're seeing a bit this year and some of the work that's being done to, to overcome them. 
Um, Monica, we've heard a lot about some of the rules for voting changing this year, and we know that particularly affects communities who have the least access the most. Can you tell us a little bit about how this is having an impact on some of the women you work with and what's working in trying to overcome those barriers? Definitely. I mean, I think there's certainly a lot of confusion. You know, the rules seem to change all the time and people can't keep up. And when you're someone who is isolated, who lives in a remote place, who doesn't have ready access to online resources, it can be very challenging to find out the information that you need. Um, certainly, we're concerned about um, purging folks from the voting rolls and, and some of those other issues, some of the ID requirements that are um, emerging. And so what we're doing is we're trying, given the, the COVID reality and that we can no longer do outreach in the way that we used to, which was door to door, um, we're trying new avenues for reaching farm workers to tell them about um, the, the changes so they can engage in voting. So we're doing more virtual engagement. Uh, we are trying to reach other people in rural America, not just farm workers who have some of the same challenges um, by doing public education campaigns. We have a big campaign coming up on Tuesday for National Voter Registration Day, which will be really working in partnership with local businesses to encourage people, customers, to register to vote, as well as to take the census. Um, and, and I think for our community, you know, 83 percent of whom are Latinx, many of whom are non-English predominant speakers, it's critical that we ensure that the information be available to them in whatever languages they speak and that the information be conveyed in a culturally competent manner. So we're developing those materials and we're making them available um, through PSAs and through online graphics and, and, and print materials as well that we're providing to the community. Great. Monica, thank you. And, and thank you to I know so many of the people you're working alongside to make sure that as these rules change, we're not leaving people behind. David, I know that your work with the Black Economic Alliance focuses on work, wages and, and wealth. And these are all very big, prominent discussions across our community right now. But we're also seeing that uh, there's a lack of, of confidence in the election process this year, which is leading some people to wonder if they should sit it out this year, even though they care about these three topics deeply. Could you tell me uh, a little bit about what you're seeing and hearing in the communities that you work in across the country and whether there are steps that you're seeing that working and helping re-engage some of these communities? So uh, that's a great question. And I'll say, you know, we talked more in 2020 than ever about the concept of uh, systemic racism and how it impacts every part of American life. And I'll say there's a lack of confidence in the election system, particularly among black people, because there's a lack of confidence in every American institution in which black people have experienced unfair, unequal treatment tied to our race. And that includes the financial system, the education system, healthcare system, policing, criminal justice, and indeed elections. Uh, so just like the Fair Housing Act, for example, didn't end redlining, which continues to block black people from the opportunity to build generational wealth, um, from owning a home, people in black communities are still encountering problems with voting um, at a higher rate and, and even as more legal access and protections have been put in place. So with that backdrop, um, I'll turn to what we can do. Uh, what can the business community in particular uh, do? There are certainly roles for the public, private and nonprofit sectors to play. And this has to be an all hands on deck approach, just as we've heard a little bit about this morning. But uh, for the business community, we've seen more corporate action on civic engagement than ever this year. Uh, particularly with respect to racial equity. And one reality is uh, many black folkers, I'm sorry, black voters uh, work in hourly jobs that don't allow them to, to work remotely and that have long commutes and uh, make it challenging for them to vote near their homes on election day. So something the private sector co uh, companies can do to encourage more of their employees to vote is providing them with paid time off uh, to engage in civic duty, uh, not only on election day, uh, but also during early voting so they can vote uh, they can volunteer as poll workers. They can even help uh, get people in ballots to the polls, uh, which just increases engagement for black voters and, and for all voters. For So, for example, in Minnesota, you can start casting your absentee ballots today. Um, from a business perspective, it makes more sense to distribute your employees' time across the days and weeks of early voting uh, leading uh, up to Election Day instead of having everybody perhaps waiting in longer lines on the same day on Election Day. Great. Thank you. And Fran, you're leading a company with 70-odd thousand staff around the world, I know around half of whom are in America. Um, 
what impact do you think you're going to see out of giving all of your staff election day off this year? You know, it's funny because I, I think we're going to learn um, quite a bit. And to David's last point, we decided to give our employees the day off. We wanted to make it easy for them. We didn't want folks worried about getting back to work. But my hope, Simon, is more than that, we create an environment where our employees feel like they can get engaged in so many issues. Maybe that's helping others. Maybe that's working at a polling location. It's funny. I have a 16-year-old daughter, and she's going to be working at a polling location, and she's passionate about it. And so the other hope that I have is that maybe giving our employees the time allows them to also connect with their friends and family about this as well. And we just make it so much more natural than it is today. Um, I think we all understand that as it is, it's a hard process in some cases. It's becoming harder. And I think for um, some of our workers, especially against the backdrop of a digital divide, we just have to be incredibly thoughtful. And so from a Cisco perspective, I think giving our employees the day off is a great starting point, And then we'll learn if there are better ways for us to do this moving forward. Great. Th th thanks, Fran. And, and you mentioned this year that it is, it's getting harder. Um, Andy, I know that young people that both you and I have been hearing from in some of our joint work together are telling us that they're just confused this year, that there's this, like, vote early, vote absentee, there's mail-in, how does that work, what is a ballot box? What do you think uh, and what do you want businesses to be knowing and doing to help make sure their staff are making the right choices and helping them cut through the, uh, the information gap? Well, I think businesses can play a huge role in communicating not only to their employees, but also to their customers. Uh, simple information uh, and uh, knowing how to request an absentee ballot, how to fill it out correctly, knowing when there is early voting in your state. This is simple information that needs to be shared. And uh, Tuesday is National Voter Registration Day. And that's a wonderful time for companies that aren't yet involved to jump in. We have a resource at headcount.org slash NVRD kit, National Voter Registration Day NVRD kit, which has just sort of simple things that you can send out to your customers or employees. And we're working with Global Citizen on the program Just Vote, where companies can get involved by giving their, their employees the day off and providing information. And we provide assets to the companies so that it's very easy to get information out there. And this really just comes down to will. Every company has the ability to talk to its employees. Every company has the ability to talk to its customers. We make it really easy. Global Citizen makes it really easy. There are a lot of organizations that do. And so I think any employer, anybody with a large email list has the ability to break down some of that confusion and provide simple information. Thanks, Andy. And um, on that note, I just want to thank all of the businesses who are not just working with us at Global Citizen, but with so many of the organisations supporting voting. The time to vote effort that uh, many corporates are supporting, I know, is getting very close to uh, their goal of a thousand businesses getting uh, time off for their staff to, to go vote, which will help millions of people make sure that they can participate in our, our process. We have a question that's come in from JP in San Francisco. Uh, who asks, voter suppression seems to be rampant. How can we use our money, and I would add as an advocate, our voices, to really impact voter participation? Um, Monica, I'd love to throw to you first, and then David, if there's anything you'd like to, to suggest on this topic. Yes, I mean, I would definitely say to support the organizations that are doing the work to fight back voter suppression. You know, there are organizations that are going to be doing monitoring at the polls who are, who are working to make sure that the, that the laws are clear and that, that people do get the information that they need. So the organizations who are doing the advocacy on the ground are key to ensuring that our democracy is functioning. And I would also say that for the employers who are thinking about what their role is in this, um, I would encourage, in addition to the day off, um, for those um, for folks to vote, to also thinking about how to get engaged earlier. We're working with an organization called Vote Hire here in Ohio, where we're trying to get employers through their human resources departments to provide voter registration information to employees so that they can register and, and if need, update their information. So I think it's important for employers to 
to be looking, you know, before the day of or in the lead up right before the election to get folks engaged. And that will be another place where we need consumers to be supporting, to tell employers that we want them to be active in supporting our democracy. And that's an, and, and we as people who spend money on their products expect that. Yeah, and so I'll just add, Monica hit all the right points. Uh, absolutely invest in the organizations that are and have been on the ground doing the work, uh, particularly in the communities that um, that have been the most impacted or, or that have the most uh, the highest risk of voter suppression. But I think starting early is the way that we can all really get ahead of this because I have a background as a voter protection attorney on the litigation side and on the ground. Uh, and a lot of the problem with voter protection is that um, when people encounter issues on election day, you have a limited opportunity to rectify them. If you start the process of voting early, uh, you have more of an opportunity to fix any discrepancies with your registration, um, with where you need to vote and how you need to vote. So I encourage everybody to get in, engaged in the process as early as possible and for the business community to support their employees and, and their customers uh, to get engaged as well. Fantastic. Thank you both. Um, one thing that I'm hearing a lot from business leaders is a question around, uh, I, I see lots of resources, I see lots of opportunities. If I was going to do one thing as a company in the run up to the election, what would that be? I'd love to just get a quick thought. Fran, I'll start with you and then go to Andy. What, what's the one thing you'd be encouraging businesses to do? Okay, so just to set the framework here, like 2020 has been like a crazy year, but what it has done is it has put focus on the most important issues, right? Health and wellness, mental health, social justice, leveraging our voice. I think the one thing companies can do um, is really make it simple, make time for their employees to vote, to get engaged. I do think it's more than one day, but that symbolically, I think, is incredibly significant. And that we just, as companies, have to keep talking about the most important issues, and we have to do so transparently, and especially when we don't have the answers. Andy, what would you add to that? Well, I'd say start right away with National Voter Registration Day. It's Tuesday of next week. You're going to see hundreds of brands and companies engaging. And if you're not, plan it now. It's two days away. I mentioned we have headcount.org slash NVRD kit, where you can find assets and resources. We've already lined up companies that are going to send 25 million emails to their customers, companies like American Eagle Outfitters and Eventbrite and Tanger Outlet Mall Centers. Every brand can get in on this. It's easy. It's basically cost free. It's a public service to your employees and your customers. So National Voter Registration Day, it's Tuesday. It's going to be big. You don't want to miss out. Check out hencout.org slash NVRD kit and we'll help you out. Great. And in the final 90 seconds that we have, I'd like to uh, just get an action that you think others can take. Andy's had, a, I think, a pretty strong go just there. So I'd love to go Monica and then David. What are those specific actions? Um, Monica, you can go first. Sure. The first is to, to check to see whether or not you're registered. And if you're not registered, register um, and find out what you need to do to vote early in your area. David. So my two actions, one, uh, as we talked about, everything in 2020 uh, has been harder, more difficult, and has required more planning. Uh, for companies, your employees have been through a lot. Uh, you absolutely can and should provide paid time off for your employees to vote, not only on Election Day, but during the days and weeks of early voting leading up to Election Day. And then the second action, um, check your registration, make sure you are registered, and make a plan to vote. You can go to blackeconomicalliance.org uh, to register, to find out about early voting, and to get more information. Brilliant. Well, everyone, thank you so much for your time. I want to especially uh, thank each of you, uh, Fran from Cisco, Monica from Justice for Migrant Women, David from the Black Economic Alliance, and congratulations on the launch of Black Voter Day today, and Andy at Headcount. Uh, we're greatly appreciative of your time. Everyone, go check your status, and if needed, go register. <laughs>